Hey y'all, Jordan from Carolina Sewing back here. And today I'm gonna to show you a different kind of hooping method called upside down hooping. Um, I think it was originally made to be used with stockings, like Christmas stockings, to use a fast frame or even the stock hoops that come with your multi needle. But it's really a good way to get larger things like bags or laptop cases, backpacks, nylon heavy stuff like that. Anything you can fit over the free arm in the front of your machine, this is a really good method to use with that. So I'm gonna show you what you need and how to do it. All right, so the supply list is pretty short for this. You just need something to cut with, uh, something to mark your stabilizer with. Um, if you're using something to mark your project with, you definitely don't want to use a Sharpie. A hoop that fits your design. Um, this works with pretty much any kind of hoop. So if you have a six or 10 needle, you have one of these hoops. So I'm gonna be using this so you can follow along. If you do have fast frames, you can also use those. Um, and then you're gonna need a peel and stick styled stabilizer. That would be like the heavy tear away that's got the slick stuff on the back that's kinda like a sticker. Um, in this case, you would normally have it facing up. I've got it facing down since we're doing the upside down hooping method. So this is that slick side. And this is the part that's a sticker. So it can be a little tricky to get that started, but um, essentially what you wanna do is just get it started little bit here I take my scissors and kind of just gently get at it and then you can wind up peeling little or large pieces off to expose your whole um, your whole adhesive and then your project so the reason I'm doing this and kind of decided to make this video is because I was playing around with one of these and it's way too thick to hoop in a regular hoop you can use fast frames or you can use clamp frames but not everybody has those if you just got into embroidery you probably don't so Having this hoop with every machine and having the ability to do anything like this or you know heavy handbags like that whatever kind of bag this is um, nylon backpacks stockings stuff that you can't hoop with these with this method you have the ability to so I'm gonna get into showing you the steps next now once you have gently removed the sticker part of your stabilizer get as much off as you can if you still got a little bit you don't have to. I'm not super particular, so I don't really care about it. Um, now you're going to take and actually place it on here. I pre-mark, and I pre-mark pretty heavy. That way, when I'm lining this up, I can line it up with my lines really good. I'm doing this one-handed, so it's a little tricky. And you can see through it, right? So... Once you get right there where it looks good you can give it a good press and I may not need to say this but I'm going to say it anyway when you're moving this around from here to your machine to wherever be careful make sure you support the whole bottom of the project don't just pick up on this because it's going to come off um, but yeah so now we're going to take over the machine and I'm going to show you probably one of the most important steps so once you get it loaded on your machine here go ahead and line it up so if you have a machine with a laser, use your laser. If you don't, uh, line it up however you prefer to do it. If you got like the array, use your crosshairs to get that lined up for you. Get to this point in your design where you can check your area. The way I like to do it as opposed to using this trial button here, I use this button and now I can choose which areas I, I care to see. So if I wanna do like the top one first, it's gonna move and show me the top. I tell you want to make a little mark right there and it needs to be pretty exact now you can check your top left corner just like that and so on and so forth on all the corners and once you get all your dots marked you wind up with something like this Essentially what you want to do is just cut out the dots. I did this already trying to see if maybe you could get away with not doing this, but peel and stick is pretty unforgiving when it comes to being stuck. So you're definitely going to want to do this step. Don't skip it or you're going to have a real nightmare of a time trying to get this stuff out of your embroidery. So next step is just cut that out right there. And once you get that cut out, this is the situation you're left with. You obviously want to cut out enough that it's not going to get caught up under it, but you don't want to cut too much to where you lose your stick because that's kind of the whole point of doing this. 
I'm gonna go ahead and say too that depending on your project, you may also want to use stabilizer underneath your project. In this case, this thing's so thick, I don't worry about it stretching or pulling. Um, but depending on what you're doing, you may want some tearaway floated down there or something like that. You will just have to kind of use your own discretion when it comes to that. So now you can line that up really well. Another trick that I tried and have not tried, done it both ways, not really sure if it matters. Um, your machines will have this little button right here, little flower. What it does when you press it, it will put a basting stitch around your design. If this is your first time doing this and you're a little nervous, it can help you a little bit um, because it kind of gives you the freedom to walk away and know that it's not gonna shift. Basting stitches aren't bulletproof, but they can be a little bit of security. Um, I'm not gonna use it on this one, but I'm gonna make sure we're all lined up. And now I'll go to embroidery. Make sure your threads are all good to go and you're happy with the placement. And then you can let it run. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll show you when we're done, just so you can kind of see the finished outcome here. Done. Now you can take it, pop it out of your machine, and you can already see how easy the unhooping process is. That's it. That looks very good um, because it was so, you know, thick. Uh, there's no puckering from not having stabilizer, no issues there. And in case you are wondering, this design is built into the baby lock array. So if you have that machine, dig around and look, there's some pretty cool designs built in. Um, but yeah, utilize this the best you can. There's so many different applications for it. If y'all have any cool ideas, drop them down in the comments. I'd like to know what you're going to use the upside down hooping method for. Until then, I'll see y'all next time.